So hello and welcome to another video. My name is Glenn and this is uh, my channel, Goomadi Coins and Banknotes. And on this channel, I like to make videos about coins and banknotes from around the world as well as Australia. So on for, uh, Thursday, yep, we make international coins. Or maybe it's Tuesday. No, Tuesday. Thursday is banknotes card. And here I've got an actual puzzle from La Trobe Uni. When, uh, oh, this is quite a few years ago, and you have to get the actual metal ball to the actual bottom. Anyway, this is going to be my pointer. So, the current coins of Iceland consist of a 1, 5, 10, 50, and 100 krona. So, you can see there's actually no twos in there. Uh, the only two denominated bank. No, or coin they have is the 2000 Krona, and that's actually not a really popular banknote. So, these coins should actually be able to get them in Iceland, but in 2008, the GFC actually had a pretty strong impact on Iceland, and what it actually done as well as electronic banking so it's actually reduced the actual coins in circulation and also it's actually impacted the actual mintages so pretty much Iceland used to issue coins I think the maximum period between issuance of coins was five years but the last time they actually minted coins was the one and the 100 krona in 2011, so that's 10 years ago. The 5 krona was last minted in 2008, as well as the 10 krona. So that is 13 years ago, they haven't minted any of these. And the 50 krona was last minted in 2005. So if we have a look at the actual... So this is actually the last year of mintage of this 50 krona. And that is 16 years since I've actually minted one of these coins. So all up, uh, a lot of these coins probably have like 10 to 20 million in circulation. The 50 krona specifically has only 10 million coins since it was first introduced in 1987. So that's it. For a population of 364,000, you know, 10 million is enough coins to satisfy uh, probably for quite a long time. So, uh, generally, probably 10 to 20 coins per person is good enough. But the GFC actually uh, would have withdrawn a lot of coins out of circulation. So when you actually have a recession or depression, uh, coinages actually get stocked up at banks because people are not spending, people do not need coins, people are actually saving coins and banknotes so they actually don't circulate around the economy and with the impact of electronic banking uh, you don't have a necessary need for coins or banknotes in that case so that has actually also impacted by decreasing the amount of new coins they would actually need for the actual market so anyway, let's have a look and see what actually is on these coins. So on the one krona, we actually have a codfish. And this is a, a beautiful fish. It looks a bit like a salmon, but it's an ocean-going fish. And it is a mill coin. So in 81 and 87, this one was copper nickel. And this one's 91, so in 89 to 2011, nickel plated steel. So, if you actually... Oh, my magnet's missing. I need to go and get another one. And on the back, we have a giant. And his name is... Uh, oh, wait, I'm just trying to look up his name. Uh, Bergrisi, and he's part... Of the actual Lenveter 
and they are actually protect the spirits so that actually protect Ireland and he actually protects the southern part of Ireland uh, not Ireland Iceland God, Ireland Iceland you know just get confused uh, when you get excited and the next coin we actually have has two dolphins on it and this one actually is a five krona so this one's a nickel plated steel and the ten krona is a big coin so if I compare it to uh, where's an Australian ten cent got it somewhere an Australian ten cent coin uh, you can see it's actually pretty much similar size to a 20 cent coin so I've got one of those on the table somewhere no, it doesn't matter I use these uh, two shillings which is the same size oh, it's actually a little bit smaller so a little bit smaller than a 20 cent coin or two shillings So here we actually have a Capelin fish, Malotus villosus, and it's a bit hard to see on that one. So there you go. You need to actually have the light coming in a different direction to get a good reflection and uh, see the actual outlines. Quite a nice fish. Then we actually have on the 50 corner, we have the European green crab, and this is actually invasive species pretty much around the world. So I'm in uh, Victoria, Australia. So this one has established itself in Port Phillip Bay and Bass Strait. So if you go there and see a green crab that looks like this, uh, it's most likely this invasive species. Uh, so eat it. Also, you can find them in South Africa, uh, North America, but they're endemic to the North Sea, so like around the United Kingdom. Um, yeah, around Iceland, the Nordic countries, coastal France, and then on the 100 krona, we have the lumpfish, Cycloterus lumpus, so lumpy lumpy. And as you can see, if actually quite a nice coin, so in 2008 this coin actually had a value of two dollars then we had the global financial crisis and the value of this iceland krona actually decreased because what i've read is that a lot of um loans and all that were actually denominated in us dollars so a lot of people actually had to default after they couldn't actually pay it because uh the currency decreased and this one in 2008 had a value of a one Australian dollar, but now it has a value of about 50 cents. So all of these are actually milled. If I put them all in their specific denominations, you can see only the 100 has interrupted milling. The rest are all pretty much milled. And on the re oh, this is the obverse. So the obverse has the land data, and these are all on the coat of arms as well. So we have the giant down here for the south, and his name is um, oh, I keep on forgetting his name. Ah, giant Burgrissi. Then we have um, Dreki the dragon. We have the boar, which is Grinfunga. Then Gumer the Eagle. So the actual eagle is north, giant is south, the dragon is east, and the bull west. So if we turn it this way, north, south, east, west. So you have Iceland here. That's where they actually guard. And Adam Veto is supposed to be guardian spirits. They inhabited regions that not many people actually live. And there's various theories about what they are. And 
These are actually a Norse and a Germanic mythology that, well, it's pretty much lived on in Iceland. It's pretty hard for another religion to actually eradicate the original religion. You really need to do a lot of work on that. And um, so this is actually what that represents. If you go to Wikipedia, that really good article on it. And you can also read it in a lot of the Icelandic sagas. So, just to read part of the article, some scholars have suggested that Landveter are catonic in nature, means they're just natural spirits of the dead, but others have interpreted them as natural spirits, since they sometimes live in land that has never been populated. So, spirit, yeah. And if you look at the areas that they actually are supposed to guard, they're all pretty much desolate. Not many people there. Okay. And it's got a lot of other information about different, different people that actually have different interpretations of them. So anyway, what would you actually be looking for in an Icelandic coinage? Well, most of these are actually pretty high mint. So, Iceland only mints every few years in the past with these. So, probably at least one or two million a coins they actually mint. But what you actually need to look for, so I've got a few here. So, these are the nickel plated steel. So, what you can actually look for are error coins. So, here's a 2008, looks normal. And generally the date has an error on them, but these ones don't have errors. I think I'll put those away. 2006. So quite nice coins. And if you actually wanted to know a nickel plated steel, um, so you got a copper nickel, nah, it's not going to actually... So this is a copper nickel, 87. And this is a nickel plated steel. So the copper nickel... No, doesn't stick to a magnet. Nickel plated steel. Or maybe it's too heavy. Yeah, it sticks to the actual magnet. If you do that with that. No. Here we have a 2011 nickel plated steel. But these ones, the 100, which is nickel brass. So it's got nickel, copper, and zinc. So the actual... Copper and zinc makes it a bit yellowish. Anyway, those are the actual coins of Iceland. If you like these coins, as I do, uh, leave a comment down below. And uh, let me know if you've actually been to Iceland and what the actual current situation with currency is in Iceland. I'd actually like to see the Mid-Oceanic Ridge and it's actually how it actually forms basalt. So form the ocean currents, not currents, the ocean um, sea floor. Basically it's all of these. Anyway, next Icelandic video I'm going to do is uh, the first independence coinage in 1944 to, was it, 66, 67. Pretty boring, not as good as these coins. But thank you very much for watching. I'll leave a link down below to Icelandic coins and on ebay and uh, have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time thank you and goodbye